I'm here today to announce that a brand new fever world record has been set in the world of electric vehicles by my friends Kent Roswell and Harvey Soiter in this beautiful Audi e-tron. Over four days, 18 and a half hours, 7,078 kilometers. This record began in St. John's, Newfoundland, 9.29 a.m. and was completed successfully in Victoria, British Columbia, 11.29 p.m. Friday night. Sunday, the day before, Kent and I leave from kilometer zero. Kent, my co-pilot, is arriving. There's Mel, your chauffeur. Did you get any sleep? I got one to two hours. So, um, I, I'm, I'll be, I'm good to go. Beautiful view, Kitty Bitty Harbor, Kitty Bitty Beer, great company and fantastic fish and chips, which I said I would swear I wouldn't eat anymore, but what We're the hell. We're about to take off on the uh, Marion's Electric Drive 2.0 uh, EV fast drive. We're gonna do our very best to make it to Victoria, BC at mile zero in about five, five and a half days. We'll see how we do it. I'm really happy that you're joining me. I can't believe it, that the uh, founder of the Sun Country Highway, who I needed to make it across the country the first time, two years ago is actually accompanying me on this trip. I'm just so happy that you're with me. Yeah, I really am. It's, it's awesome. It's going to be a blast. We're off. This is the start of the Ooh. trip. Right. Okay. It's uh, 9.29. We're leaving a minute early. And Kent, what do you think? Pretty exciting. We're about to head on to, I think it's called Route 2, which leads right into the Trans-Canada Highway. There are three reasons for doing this fast EV drive across Canada. First, to cross Canada from BC to Newfoundland, visiting family and friends that I hadn't seen for two years due to COVID-19. Second, on my return to drive my EV as fast as possible from one end of the Trans-Canada Highway to the other, setting an EV speed record and showing this is possible with the much improved charging infrastructure that didn't exist just two years ago. Third was to continue to raise funds for my late wife's, Mary Ann's favorite charity of supporting Dr. Chris Honey's research for Parkinson's and other brain disorders through the VGH Hospital Foundation. We're about 99 kilometers we've driven so far and our average speed is 99 kilometers an hour. We don't have quite enough range to make to the first scheduled stop. So we're just gonna stop in Clarenville, which is a little bit shorter uh, distance away. We actually, took a, a wrong turn uh, to get on the Trans-Canada Highway. We took the first exit and not the second. That was a bit of a bummer, but uh, we may have lost maybe four minutes, that's it. And the Audi's uh, performing beautifully, um, and Newfoundland's a gorgeous province to, uh, to travel through, so it's always fun being out here. Now we got Mel there in the back seat. I'm the back seat driver. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, uh, my average speed is 93 kilometers per hour. My range is 303 kilometers, and my target is 257 kilometers. So we're totally great. We're heading into Gander. Everybody knows how famous Gander is during 9-11. 11 happened 20 years ago. The community of Gander and surrounding community put up all these people that came off the planes that were had to land in Gander because of 9-11, because the air traffic was grounded. 6,800 people, 38 aircraft landed in Gander. And I did interview Tony of Appleton, one of the residents, and opened up his home to two of the, what they were called, so-called plane people. And he offered me a beer, we had a nice chat, and uh, really proved to me, well, I didn't have to really add proof, but, People of Newfoundland are just so nice and welcoming and friendly. Just left the charger at Bishop's Falls and that's going to give us tons of time or tons of power to make it to our next charging stop. Yeah, well I couldn't see myself uh, <coughs> going five days uh, sleeping in a car <laughs> so I decided uh, to accompany Harvey and support him for Newfoundland and now back to uh, Fredericton. One of the things that we're talking about is the strategy of the charging. We're gonna be on our way to the Port of Basque where the ferry is, where we're gonna to take tonight. You, know, you have to be there two hours in advance of the 11.45 sailing. I did call the, um, the ticket office and told them that um, you know we're on this 
fast EV drive and we want to save time and we're hoping that we can get you know later on so that we can leave later and save some time so they actually got it and agreed that we're going to boot it as fast as we can down to Porto Basque and then use all that extra time that are in advance of 11 o'clock that is the last time that we really should get on the ferry it'll be all used to charge up so when we get off the ferry in the morning in Sydney which arrives around 7 uh, we'll have a fully charged car these chargers have been amazing these are put in by charge point powered by Newfoundland Hydro part of uh, traveling uh, in an EV which we've been doing for uh, you know virtually a decade now um, you know when you're traveling and you're in a hurry um, you shouldn't leave it to the very last uh, stop before you're out of power because anything can happen with those EV chargers from somebody being parked in the spot to the breaker being down to you know um, you know a lawnmower cutting the cord or a snow plow you know catching the, the cord or the cable um, you know we've seen uh, pretty much everything under the sun that could happen to these things and uh, and if you're traveling and you're in a hurry uh, it's really good to not um, um, leave yourself without an extra backup so it's best to leapfrog the chargers um, you know take a charge when you can and uh, and then uh, and then keep going so it's probably the best word of advice um, if, if somebody's under uh, a timeline restraint there is more level twos out there now than before like when we were electrifying the highways there really wasn't any other chargers out there a lot of the times we're the only charger in the whole town or city it's really important not to leave yourself a backup plan most people uh, that have say level two chargers are are pretty accommodating and they'll let you charge up for free some places like a lot of s westerns and most of our other customers don't really restrict access. Without your charging network at Sun Country, I wouldn't have been able to make it across the country two years ago. I've never used any of anybody else's chargers before in my life, right? So he gave me the charge point card and I went up and uh, I, I plugged in the car, I tapped it and it started to charge and then it said, nope, sorry, you know, need, uh, charger needs service. So, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, that's why you leapfrog and make sure that you always uh, can, uh, you know, get to the next charger if the one charger doesn't work. Okay. So, um, but, you know, we, we pulled it out, checked the car, make sure that it was off, uh, reset it, plugged it in the car again, and tapped it, and it did work. I'm going to do my best to find uh, a big, heavy, fast-moving transport truck to for two reasons. The number one reason is to prevent my car getting smashed by a moose. The other reason is to get a draft so my efficiency of my car is a bit better. The ferry just docked into North Sydney Harbour for Marine Atlantic. How was your sleep last night? Um, it was amazing. <laughs> you know that's the last time we're going to be in a bed. We had to do the checkpoint. We we're off the ferry. We had a good night's sleep. We've got a beautiful rainbow on our trip so f this morning. Okay, this is the Canso Causeway where we're going to go from Cape Breton, where we just come from, over this narrow crossing where ships usually go, and there's a lock there as well. And now we are in the mainland. We're all about sustainability here on our EV and we're looking at turbines, wind turbines creating electricity that we get our cars powered by. Exactly. That's the plan, as well as solar. Grab some muffins. Oh, that's awesome, Marisa, <laughs> thank you. We're just dropping Mel off and Marisa is here to pick up Mel. I have a good reason to stay in Fredericton. So you can travel across the road, you can sleep in the car, you can get a sore butt. <laughs> Just be careful, stay away from uh, yeah. animals, and animals, stay away. Right. We're coming to the first level three charger on our trip. It's a Petro Canada. We're really happy that we're here. We have two chargers in front of us. Not the first level three. First, for, sorry, first level three, 150 kilowatt. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Mel was here and he needed this seat, but we now need to have the front seat re reclining. So I'm, I'm gonna move the spare tire over to the far left of the car behind the driver's seat. This charger is now pumping at 151 kilowatts. That's a record for our trip right now. Only been charging for 16 minutes. 
and we're going to leave it till 80 percent and i'm guessing in about or actually less than five minutes we'll be at 80 percent it's already at 70. ken said he had to go to the bathroom he went to the bathroom with the last place and he said he had to go again so i'm still letting it charge up while he's in the bathroom we went from 70 eight percent to now 84 percent slows down after 80 percent but it's still pumping at 94 kilowatts an hour and look at the price 575 for 52.3 kilowatts per hour you gotta love that we're at 85 percent now and Kent better come out of the bathroom because we want to get going Ken is finally here after coming into the bathroom and we charge five more percent than you know we the car's been ready before before he's ready how cool is that? <laughs> Just over an hour ago, we were looking forward to um, another great success with Petro Canada, right? The third. Yeah, the first two were awesome. First two were awesome, charged super fast, easy to find, you know, like a dream charge, right? Okay. Totally. And uh, Riviera de Lou, we went to the Petro Canada expecting the same experience and were completely disappointed. The first Time we used the number two charger didn't work at all and then the number one charger started to work great and after about um i don't know five minutes it went from 144 kilowatts per hour down to 34. we actually had a little bit of hail a few kilometers back we're getting a lot of lightning as well uh, we're both up right now it's uh 1 13 in the morning our next charge point is in Vier, we're taking the North Shore route. Well, this route just takes us north, right through Hawkesbury, right through to Ottawa. Well, I think we have about 3,100 kilometers now put on the car since we left St. John's. And we're headed to Sault Ste. Marie. We're in Sudbury now. The Petro Canada chargers, other than the one in Riviera Lou, have been working awesome. 97% from 3% in 37 minutes. Wawa, Ontario, at the Petro Canada station, and we're pretty happy. We were getting as high as 156 kilowatts off this charger, it's pretty crazy. Number one, number two, they all work. So. <laughs> no, that's And great. number three, it's around 11 o'clock p.m., so, um, yeah, so yeah, they're all good. Uh, we only had um, one small hiccup, I think. What was that? Uh, the, the second charger of the day, we were expecting up to 150 kilowatts of a new charger and um, and we uh, we actually got about almost 50 and then it dropped down to about 12 so um, that's not what we were expecting but you know about 11:30, uh, uh, we're about to depart Wawa Ontario heading north towards Thunder Bay and uh, we've been driving for a few hundred kilometers and you'll notice that uh, these chargers are on the Tesla chargers down the road are on and if you spin around you will notice that no lights at any gas station are on along the whole few hundred kilometers. So in essence, if you want uh, security uh, when you're traveling, electric is definitely the way to go because it's open 24 seven. It's around uh, two o'clock in the morning in Terrace Bay. I thought we would try the IB system and I had tried the IB system before, but this time the my credit card uh, payments it didn't authorize, even though my credit card is totally fine. Um, but, and it took me about, uh, I don't know, a good five, 10 minutes to even find the charger. It's the first time I've been here and it definitely wasn't easy to find. And once I got here, it just took another 10 minutes to, to get it going. And normally IV is like, you get it started like within 30 seconds. But this time we've had some issues, but it's going now and we, we're just gonna get enough juice in the battery to get to the Petro Canada where we're gonna get 150 kilowatt charge. Um, and uh, that'll take us to um, maybe even as far as Ignace, but we may probably stop in Thunder Bay uh, to, get, to get a really uh, another 80% charge. And that will only take like 15, 20 minutes with 150 kilowatts as the Ivy ones are only 50 kilowatts. 10.39 on Thursday. And we just finished charging up in Kenora and we're on our way to Winnipeg. You're looking, you're, looking, you're looking smart today there, <laughs> Kent. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Last night was one of my best night's sleep. I was like solid gone, and you had a great night's sleep as well. And I think it kind of catches up to you. We have no choice. You're going to be zonked <laughs> out. 
Should be getting to Winnipeg just under two hours from now, heading to Regina, and we should be in Regina sometime early evening. By late tonight, possibly early in the morning, we will be in Calgary. Yeah, baby. We're in Manitoba. And look at the road just change just like that. We were going through our timelines. We were figuring, you know, we could possibly be in Vancouver as early as uh, for early Friday morning. Because uh, we're going to be in Calgary on Thursday night. And we could easily make it to Vancouver, uh, you know, like Friday, you know, late afternoon. Or early, or early afternoon, like around 1 or so, and grab a ferry to Victoria and be there Friday after, late afternoon, like 7, or 7 o'clock. And I looked at my schedule, I said, how could that be? And sure enough, um, I made a mistake on the schedule. I had one day, um, I only put down like one hour of uh, activity and I didn't realize that and I made the next day like a whole another day. And that's why it was like out by 24 hours. It looks like we're gonna be in Victoria late in the afternoon or early evening tomorrow. Can you believe that? That's Friday, was that the 17th? <laughs> That's crazy. At the Petro Canada station, we got our full charge and we got our showers. Would you, how was the shower? <laughs> how was that shower, man? <laughs> that, that's what a million dollars feels like right there. Cruising into Calgary, we have a, not an incident really, but we do have a little bit of excitement since where our trip has been kind of excitement free. Not totally. Right now we have about 41 kilometers left in the battery. And, um, and then down here we have 26 kilometers to to the charger. So I've been just hypermiling to basically create more energy. So I took it from a, a buffer of uh, 12 kilometers and took it up to 20 kilometers from 12, which really gives you almost twice the, the buffer. And uh, now that we're a little bit closer to the site, we can speed up a little bit. We've got some extra energy. Well, thanks for putting my mind to rest. <laughs> Or at ease, I should say. That's great. Yeah, yeah. And the charger that we're going to is Electrify Canada, and it's near the airport. And we're and hoping they have their 350 kilowatt, right? Well, they, we can't use the 350. We can only use up to 150, but we can use the 350. But last time I checked, it, and I actually used the uh, chargers there, it was flawless. It was great. Well, we had a successful charge at Electrify Canada. Kent knows a shortcut to get back to the Trans Canada where, from where the chargers were. And we actually have to drop some luggage off at the, your house, right? Drop some weight off, yep. yeah. Get rid of some weight, and you had to pick up some contacts too, I think. And it's li literally on the way. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, on, it's on the shortcut. 7 a.m. and we're leaving Calgary. We've got enough juice to make it almost all the way to Golden, but we're gonna stop in Canmore at Electrify Canada Station. We're gonna be level three high speed all the way. Kent's been doing most of the driving earlier this morning. We're all excited because today's the last day. Yeah! <laughs> Might be a late one, but it's the It'll last be late, one. but we're gonna we're gonna be they'll do this in less than five days. <laughs> We're just pulling on to the freeway here in about one minute. Well, whatever you can throw together is, no, is, is awesome. Not. And he knows what we're leaving Catmore right now. A uh, latte would be good, yeah. Do you want a latte? No, no. No, thank you. Uh, I've got, I'm fine. No, just fine another latte. Yeah, a latte for me, please, yeah. <laughs> thank you. The second Banff exit, I'll pull off, right? And then I'll go up to the top of the hill. Or I'll go up to the top of the bridge. Nice to see you, Ken. Well, really nice I'm sorry for the loss of Marianne. Oh, thank you, thank it's, you. It's uh, such an honor to be able to meet you guys here as you're going across the country. Yeah. Here's the. Oh, oh that's great. It's the voting period, so we like to say in Banff, let's rock the vote. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Good morning, thanks. All right. Here's two uh, freshly grilled breakfast sandwiches oh from the wildflower. And this here's is... three different species of mountain sage to give you a safe drive. I thought it would oh. match your color of your car and some fresh washed berries in awesome. here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. Now I'm going to take a little Hold on. picture yeah, of sure. yeah, for you there too.
attention and we had to stop for, I don't know, not even two or three minutes. But, you know, when you're going across the country, there's bound to be construction and you have to, you know, allow for some delays. And um, so we had a bit of a delay, but not too bad. And in the summertime, if we did this trip in the summer, the volume of cars would be probably, I don't know, five times more. What do you think, Ken? Ten times. Ten times more, yeah. So that means we can, you know, one of the strategies that we had was to do this trip after Labor Day. And um, so that's what, why we did it when we did it. The position where we are right now is we're getting very close to Golden, BC. Uh, we're actually probably five kilometers from the entry to the town and a brand new charging station from Electrify Canada. Uh, I don't think, and I don't know exactly when it was opened, but it's gotta be within the last few weeks. So we're gonna be charging there and the charge t time shouldn't be too long. I'm gonna say 20 minutes at the most. And uh, then our next stop won't be till Salmon Arm, BC. 9.49 daylight time. We're heading into Rogers Pass. Is named after <laughs> Captain Rogers. I forgot his first name. He's one to discover the pass, especially through the Selkirk Mountains for the CPR, Canadian Pacific Railway. This was very difficult task to even find it, number one, and then to get through it with the CPR Railroad. One of the things that they had an issue with in the wintertime was snow. They're, this area gets more snow than almost any area in the world. The snow would be coming over the railway tracks. They had to build snow sheds and they actually have an underground tunnel that I think is about 11 kilometers long. For the traffic for cars, they use these snow sheds that we're going through right now. Friday afternoon in Salmon Arm and it's the mad EV crazy drive from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, BC. And one of the people that inspired me to do a trip like this was this man standing right here. Before I did any trips, I saw in a um, <clears throat> some sort of post, and I saw your your bolt right here that had this big, huge Viva sticker on it. And um, I, I joined up for Viva right away. And now I meet you in person. Thanks. So good yes. to see you. Let's go have beer. Yeah, let's go have a beer. <laughs> Honored to meet you. My, my pleasure. Yes. And my uh, yes. Yes. My uh, it's, you're you're one of my heroes. There you go. Well, this is an amazing trip, and I thank you very much for having the honor to park our 2017 Bolt next to your brand new hot rod. There. It's two years old now. Wow. And you left Newfoundland on Monday. Monday morning, 9:30. It's Friday. 12.30, 1 o'clock now, 1.30? Yeah. See, the first time it was about making it. So they did it two yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah. And it was about just getting across. Now the infrastructure is so good, it's not a challenge at all. Before it was a challenge. Right, right. And especially for you, because you did it even before me. Well, I'm thinking that this is really something special. Thank you to you guys for having me down for the day. And I look forward to meeting you guys in Victoria. It was a real treat that Bruce and his wife Susan, longtime members of the Vancouver Electric Vehicle Association, drove their EV to Hope to meet with Kent and I for our final charge and push towards our ultimate goal of mile zero in Victoria. After a quick coffee while my Audi was charging, we were on our way with Bruce escorting us all the way to the Victoria Ferry. It was a good thing as there was a massive traffic jam on the Trans-Canada. Bruce took us off the highway where we took a back roads detour which allowed us to arrive in plenty of time at the ferry terminal. At the start of the trip was when I went into City Hall because um, uh, kilometer zero is right at the St. John's City Hall right out front. And uh, inside there is a big you know, image of Terry Fox and, and, and his story. And, um, and we were talking to Bill, uh, Bill this um, um, security guy there that was there when Terry Fox um, took off. And um, you know, he said, here's this kid with one leg and he wants to you know run across the whole country and in, 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 in a very short period of time and he goes he didn't even he didn't know how anyone could even make it to the next city 
and yet Terry did and he hit a lot of other cities after that and uh, he got halfway across the country before he caught pneumonia and um, that pretty much um, was the end of it but well his cancer had spread yeah. to his to his lungs I um, couldn't have had a more perfect co-pilot than you when you said that you would be interested in being my co-pilot first of all I, I didn't really didn't think that was I'm like listening to reality because you're my hero. Mm -hmm. You've done so much, people don't recognize you for it's nowhere near what you're, you, have, you should be taking credit for. And to have you as my co-pilot is a dream come true, so just wanna let you know that. I appreciate that very much. It was the final barrier, the final barrier to allow people to believe they can travel uh, quickly and, and, and long distances and, uh, you know, They've been able to travel long distances for 10 years, but not as quick as I would again today. And, and it really will change the viewpoint of people pertaining to electric cars. I just wanted to make sure that I could so support you as much as I could and, um, and make sure that I could add my you know, decade worth of experience to make sure that, that the trip went perfect in as many ways as possible. I mean, we made it safely. Uh, we did, like just a little, little we you know, cut in the tire, the one tire, and uh, that's well, pretty amazing on that route. Yeah, it was a, like yeah. a half an inch little minor cut. It took us four days, 18 hours, hours and 30 minutes. And, 30 minutes. and that including all the ferry travel time, yeah. waiting in ferry lineups, getting off the ferry, which had nothing to do with the driving, but the time that we're just mentioning includes all the ferry time. Mm -hmm.